devised a new system teaching drones to spot violent behaviour in crowds using AI. Let's uh, talk to two of the scientists who conducted that research. Dr. Omkar uh, is from the Indian Institute of Science uh, and he joins us from Bangalore. And Amarjot Singh, uh, who specialises in artificial intelligence at the University of Cambridge, uh, is here. Uh, but I think you not, don't represent the university in this particular issue. This is your own particular uh, research. Uh, Dr. Omkar, if I, if I can start with you. How, how, how does this work in terms of the algorithms? What, what exactly have you, have you done? Well, these algorithms are based on machine learning, which actually learns from experience. These are all things which uh, can teach themselves and learn from experience. So we have to set up these algorithms which are based on the techniques of uh, natural intelligence, which we program it so that uh, we can learn things from experience, just like a human does. We are not very close to what human does, but still we are able to recognize some of these activities like uh, crowd behavior and in that we have taken some simple example where some violence activities or suspicious activities can be detected using these so algorithms. Just, so just to be just to be clear this technology what views body language uh, and and can somehow convey perhaps somebody thinking about punching or strangling or stabbing or shooting someone but how advanced is it? So there are uh, three particular layers in this, if you can see. First is we detect the human in any given uh, scene. Now that is a network which detects the human. We takes uh, the 14 point representation, representing the major joints of the human body, which human bodies are detected. And then there is a pose estimation algorithm which will detect the pose in which they are involved, whether it is a uh, simple standing or whether two, three individuals are uh, interacting in some way like punching or stabbing, things like that, and that will classify it as a violent behavior or not. All right, so okay. So this is really an architecture. Okay, Amarjot um, Singh, just looking at some of the images that we've been showing when we were speaking to um, Dr. Onkar there, yeah. these people I mean, are standing yeah. uh, in a wide open space yeah. and actually physically taking somebody by the, the neck. Now, forgive me, I mean, that you know, yeah, it couldn't be more obvious to anyone, could it? Um, so, so how subtle is this? Sure, so what you saw right now is uh, what we have developed essentially is a prototype. So you pointed out correctly that these images don't really represent properly how these activities will appear in the real world setting. But what we have shown is that it is possible, but it has to be modified and expanded for the real world environment, real world cases. Okay, so, so, so these trials here yeah. that we're showing at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, this is all you've conducted so far. You haven't put it in a, in a real life crowd situation where perhaps there are 10, 12, 15, 20,000 uh, people. Not right now, but we'll be doing that in another two months. Uh, and how successful has the, the trials already been? So the trials have been quite successful. So we are able to detect these violent activities with an accuracy of around 88%. So I would say they're quite successful, but again, this is just a prototype right now and things might get a bit complicated in real-world settings. Dr. Dr. Omkar, what about the, the ethics uh, of this? If this gets into the hands of repressive authoritarian regimes or private surveillance companies, have you thought about that? Uh, well, this has a potential application, uh, especially the police department and the, uh, any other uh, authorities which will emphasize on monitoring the mob behavior can definitely use this. And, and what, what is your view? I mean, are you, are you aware of the, the potential conflicts here? I am aware that there is a certain uneasiness about the fact that this can potentially be used for monitoring uh, people which the government doesn't like. But I, I would say that it's not so easy to design these experiments. It has been put in recently that anyone can take a drone and modify these algorithms and can track anyone they want to. It's not quite easy because in this situation we are trying to recognize certain postures and that is what it is limited to. We're running out of time. Have you got some big state players interested in, in purchasing this technology? No. 
we don't have right now, but also we are not willing to sell as well because we are being a bit careful about who we sell it to. All right, okay, Amajit Singh and Dr. Omkar in Bangalore. Uh, thank you both.